back when I started trading many years ago, uh, scalping was a term that was used to describe people that were not real traders, right? They were just people who would just jump in and jump out, real erratic, uh, high stress, uh, low patience, uh, would take dozens or hundreds of trades a day with really no plan, okay? They, they use their gut instincts a lot uh, and only looking for a couple of ticks uh, in either direction. The only thing that fits my definition of scalping uh, as, as I do it is that we have small targets and small stops. Everything else doesn't really fit with what we do as far as what my uh, understanding of scalping was back in the day when it was a dirty word. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the setups that we use. Some of the stuff we're going to go over, we went over briefly in the Ninja event. I'm going to I'm going to skip over a lot of that, but I am going to talk about a few things for those people that weren't able to see that event. The video of that event has not been posted yet. So uh, if you weren't able to see it, there is a video forthcoming. These are the typical disclaimers. This is, uh, there's a lot of risk in trading. You will not like, likely not make a lot of money. Only trade with money that you could uh, afford to lose because chances are you are going to lose. Um, all of those things. Uh, this is strictly for educational purposes, uh, and that's it. So basically, that's all it says. If you need to take a screenshot, you can read this later or pause the video here uh, and make sure you understand that that uh, we are not trying to push you into day trading and we're not making any promises. Okay. So we're here to talk about mastering a scalp trade. And again, scalping, scalping for what we're talking about now is only, the definition that we're going to use is only about small targets, okay? Now, we only trade small targets because the best information is the information that's coming into the markets right now. That's the best information. So if you're making decisions on what's going to happen based on the information that's coming in right now, you're going to have the best information for decision makings right now. Okay? Right now, something is likely to happen. What's going to happen five minutes from now, ten minutes from now, 30 minutes from now, who knows? There are so many more influences in the markets with the power to manipulate the markets these days than there has ever been. However, people are slow to change and people are quick to follow people who have been regurgitating the information as, yeah, you got to buy low uh, before a trend starts or just at the beginning of a trend, and then you got to sell it right at the time the trend is about to end. That's the only way to make money at, at day trading. And I believed that for many years, many years. However, never worked for me, ever. So when I decided to give up, on this this whole idea of trying to follow the trend and be a trend trader and trend for trade for you know uh, a single contract or you know small lot for uh, a long period of time it never worked for me so i did something a little bit different i decided you know i'm a contractor and a contractor's best skill is problem solving. At least mine was. So I decided, okay, I'm going to quit trying to do what everybody's telling me to do. And I'm going to try to figure this out like it's a problem. 
So I started looking at charts and I started saying, okay, so there's areas on a chart where for no particular reason, price just changed direction. Something, look, we have a hard push up here. Everybody's like, bye, 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 and then sell. So what happened right here? Something happened in this bar or a culmination of some things happened to suggest that, okay, it's time now for the sellers to take control. And it happens all the time on every chart, something is causing this to happen. And I started thinking, you know, if I could just figure out what's going on in this bar and what led up to this bar, maybe I'd have some sort of an edge I could exploit. So that's where my study began. And I stopped thinking about these big trades. And I started thinking about how to take small trades and put the money in the bank. All right. So I know you guys are very interested in seeing what it is that we do. And I typically put this off until a little bit later in the presentation. But we get people that get a little bit antsy and they want to start seeing what it is that we do. They don't want to really hear a lot of the reasoning behind what we do. So this video, by the way, I just put this together last night. So if you want this video, uh, you see the link in the chat there. Well, up, I pinned it to the top. Um, I haven't posted it up anywhere, but there is audio on this video of me in the trade room, moderating the room, and telling people what I'm about to do or what I'm doing, um, how the trade is going. So you'll hear me on most of the trades call out the trade ahead of time, tell you what I'm watching. Um, I'm not going to do the audio here um, because I'm going to talk about it. But uh, if you want this video, and these are just some trades I just picked from this week. I. I didn't do spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, so if you want it, send an email. I'll let you know where I post it. I'll, I'll send it back to you with the link. Okay. All right. So we have a trade set up on the CL starting right here. This is what we do every day, all day long. You'll notice here, we're kind of in a, a little bit of a sideways uh, channel here. Then we bust out of this channel, and price starts pushing up, and then we get this sudden burst of energy here. Now, you'll notice that the outline, and I'm sorry, this is a little bit blurry. We record every minute of our trade rooms every week, and we post it up for our uh, members to use for their practice sessions. And we have many years' worth posted up in the members area that you can go back and you can look at yesterday or you can look at three years ago. Um, so in order to keep the files as small as possible, they're a little bit blurry, but they serve their purpose just fine. Right? And these are just the daily trade room videos. And they're a little bit blurrier because I'm trying to zoom in a little bit here so you can actually see uh, what we're doing. So anyway, this is a very typical trade setup for us. And this is very typical when we start seeing this type of bar for us to get alerted to the fact that something is happening. See this here? And we talked about this on Thursday. This is our speed tick indicator. Speed tick tells us that the orders are being processed through the exchange much, much faster than is likely retail traders can trade, uh, uh, can place those trades. Okay. Us little guys, you know, the guys with not a lot of money, we can't, 
process orders that quickly. So the big boys must be manipulating this bar, okay, because they have all the money and all the power uh, and all the, the, the nice toys to be able to um, manipulate the market, okay? Now, something else happens here. We start getting more indicators suggesting something's about to happen that's going to cause that reaction that I told you that I was looking for. Price stops and changes directions for what seems like no particular reason, except we've broken it down. And we now see a confluence of conditions that causes that reaction. So we have our pullback alert. This is telling us that this bar was originally being controlled by the buyers, but all of a sudden the sellers right up in here, which this is a, a line of major resistance, and this is where the sellers are waiting. That's what this little dot, this little dot is very powerful. And it's telling us, that there's a churning activity now going on inside the bar. We are reading the type of volume coming into the bar. And that type of volume says buyers, 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 and then buyer, seller, buyer, seller, buyer, seller. Okay? When price has moved this far, this fast, buyers start getting exhausted. And what starts happening is one of three things. People are either getting stopped out, People are either bailing out because they were short and, and now it's going against them and they get scared or people that are long or people that are not, have already bought are now taking profits. So we know that when all of those three things or any of those things happen, we know that it's very likely price is going to drop. All right, so we run into this resistance. And price pulls back from that resistance. You can see my mouse on the screen was, I was pointing it out to the people in the trade room. Price opened actually right here, which is, this is a speed tick trade setup. This is the one we call our speed tick trade setup. Does not have the rock star on this particular one. The price opened here, which is where we make our decision to place a trade. And they, the rule is that five ticks or less from this line of resistance qualifies it for a speed tick trade. So you see this indicator here on the side. This is our OTS. So we can tell this OTS, this green arrow, is five ticks away from the open. The red arrow is seven ticks away. That's our target and stop. But I can also use this to tell me, hey, if this opened and this is five ticks, then that's below, that's too far away from this resistance. So it did not qualify for a trade setup on the open of the bar, but it did when it backed up and it got closer. Now, one thing that would have disqualified this, even if it had backed up, See how this bar hit the resistance and it reacted to that resistance and pulled back. So now we have confirmed that this resistance has value to the people that are trading right now. Okay. That resistance was respected. If this bar had had, there was no wick here had just ended here. And then the next bar opened. That would not have qualified this for a speed tick trade. It qualifies because I qualified this line as having good resistance. Okay? And that's going to help us in the event that we enter a trade and it still wants to go against us. So let's keep watching. So it's going against us. I'm in this trade. I'm pointing it out uh, on the uh, chart with my mouse there in the trade room. Price is slamming into resistance. Now, I didn't get in here. I waited for it to back up to less than five ticks from this resistance. And this is where I got in. So it's, it's testing the line, testing the line. The line finally, it finally fails. And we end up with our winner right there. 
So remember that chart I showed you that I was putting the, that I was drawing on. Price came up, something happened, and then price turned. And that's what we know is happening now because we've we've sliced and diced all the information inside this bar and come up with way, ways to read that information to tell us what's going on. Right? So here's another one. Uh this is the 6E. This one, a little bit different trade setup. This is called a naked rock star. But again, and I'm not going to go into all the fine detail about everything in, that's going on, on inside each indicator here. What I want to show you and I want to make sure you understand is what I'm going to be showing you and teaching you today is what we actually do in the trade room every day. It looks exactly the same. One of the issues I had when I was a struggling trader was that I would hear things in webinars, and then I would go to the trade room, and it was like nothing I heard in the webinar. Right? It, it's like, well, you got me interested, and now I'm here, but, wow, it's a lot more complicated and a lot different than what you were telling me. Right? So we're, again, we're slicing and dicing all the information that's inside the bar. And this is just stuff that we did inside in the trade room. These are just some trades I took off. Uh, I keep a, a trade log, a potential trade log. Here's one on the ES over here. I keep a potential trade log. So I went and just looked at a few of them and went back and snipped out some of the daily trade room recordings so you guys could see what we do each day. All right? And that's it. Now, we trade, and I'll go over this in a few minutes. We trade for a five-tick target. And we can talk about that later and why we do that. All right. So, again, I haven't posted this up anywhere. But if you send us an email and beg us to do it, we'll post it up and we'll send you uh, a link to where it's posted. Um, and the re again, the reason you may want to watch it uh, is because of you can hear what's actually happening in the trade room. Okay. All right. So what we have is an extremely simple trading system. Now, we have very specific rules for each trade, not like the conventional wisdom of, uh, uh, of scalpers, and that is that we're all Wild West gunslingers and we just pew, 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 shoot, shoot at everything that we can find and hopefully we kill more than kills us. Uh, that's, that's not how we trade. But it is extremely simple. So it's so simple, I like to just kind of compare it to the simplicity of a bouncing ball. Now you look at that and you go, well, that's simple, isn't it? Well, it is simple. The anticipation of the bounce is simple. If you watch somebody uh, drop a ball, you'll kind of have a pretty good idea what's going to happen to that ball after it hits the floor, right? right? Of course we do. Or... Do we just make assumptions based on what little information that we think we have? Okay, us traders are notorious for making assumptions based on what little pieces of information we think we have. So, yes, this is very simple, a bouncing ball, because of the assumptions. But to be honest, bouncing balls... There's a lot going into it. But again, if you know what's going into it to make the ball bounce, all of the different characteristics of the environment and the ball itself, like, you know, you know what to expect. So we need more information about the characteristics of the ball and the floor and the velocity at which it approaches the floor. You know, is it made out of rubber or plastic? Um, um, is it solid? Is it, is it filled? It, it, does it, um, have any kind of density at all? Is it full of sand, um, or water? Um, 
uh, or is it full of air and how much air? Um, and are you going to drop it from four feet or a couple of inches or you're going to fire it out of a cannon or are you going to throw it up, you know, 20 feet in the air before it hit? All of those things, if you know those things, you know what to expect from the bounce. Okay? So we start measuring for characteristics in the market to anticipate the bounce. So we're going to figure out if the ball will change directions when and by how much has been measured, right, uh, for bouncing ball. Um, we do the same thing with price. We're measuring volume, volatility, order flow. We're measuring strength of the market, strength of the of the current move, this, this right here, the strength of this move, and we measure that. So we can anticipate the exhaustion when the when the uh, instrument hits the floor, which in this case is an area of support. Okay, it doesn't always it, it's not always an area of support, but that's a good place to say, hey, this is a good solid floor and a bouncy ball. Okay. Now remember, and we're measuring. What's happening right now? So we know what's going to happen right now. That bounce. That's our edge. And the nice thing is, and this is what's different about us when, when we talk about scalping, a lot of people think, well, again, there's no process or procedure. And there actually is, and it's very strict. And very simple. Okay, it's a very simple process. So we wait for a series of conditions to exist. If condition number one does not exist, then guess what we do? We wait. We just sit. We do nothing. We we chat in the trade room. We talk about just stuff. We do not talk about the markets or do market analysis or what the talking heads had to say or any of that. That makes no difference with what we do, okay? But if condition one exists, like we have a strong push, then we start looking for condition number two. And if it exists... Or if it doesn't exist, the whole thing stops right there, and we're done. And we'll we'll go back, and we'll go back to wait for condition number one. If it does exist, we're going to condition three. If that exists, we're going to condition four, and so on, until we get to a point where we go, okay, all conditions are met, time to execute a trade. And it's as straightforward and simple to understand as that. There is no, after getting into a trade, wondering, did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing? And sitting there, sweating bullets, trying to remember all of the rules and all of the conditions that you needed. And then you realize, ah, oh, I probably shouldn't have gotten into this trade, but I really wanted to be in this trade. But now that I'm in the trade, ah, oh, shoot, I, let me just, let's just see what's going to happen. And you stay in the trade, and usually something bad happens. So when we have a confluence of indicators, everything we do is all about confluence. And when we have a confluence of indicators, where we have an agreement between a group of mostly non-correlated indicators, non-correlated, meaning they're all coming from measuring the data, but using it to compare different things, all right? So when all of them suggest that something is about to happen, then we know we have the potential for price just stopping and changing directions, okay? Remember, the information is coming in right now, so we're expecting something right now from a multiple 
of non-correlated indicators. So, for example, to illustrate this, let's say you ask somebody a question, and you think this guy knows what he's talking about, and he agrees with what you're asking, or he says yes to whatever your question is. How much faith do you have, if it's just one person, that he's right? Maybe a lot, maybe a little, but what if you had people from all different walks of life, all different perfect professions, different backgrounds and life experiences coming together and agree strongly with each other that they believe what this one guy believes. Now, which is more credible? One person telling you their opinion or a group of people from different professions and walks of life telling you they all agree on something. Obviously, the group is more credible. But again, I just wanted to remind you, um, we, there was an event on, for, on Thursday that we did with Ninja Trader. And hopefully a, a lot of you saw that event. Uh, and that recording has not been posted yet. But if you send uh, a request to us uh, at that email address, it's also in your um, uh, pinned up at the top of the chat, uh, and request it. As soon as it gets uh, released, we'll send you a link to it. All right, so let me show you what this looks like to us a little bit slower. Okay. So we have a channel. Price has been kind of traveling in a channel here for a few minutes. And then price suddenly breaks out of this channel right here. And we start gaining some momentum. Notice the size of these bars. And then these bars start getting bigger. We also have our indicator called the Mometer. So this is to tell you how strong that momentum is. You see the, the black color. And then it gets a little bit lighter as the momentum increases. And then it gets a little lighter as momentum increases. The lighter the bar gets, the more imminent the pullback. Okay? Now, we also know, you'll notice that these bar outlines are all white until price gets oversold. Now it changes color. When price gets oversold, we know that exhaustion is beginning to set in. Well, why do we want exhaustion? Because it's key to let us know when the sellers are done and the buyers are ready to stop to step in. All right? And we have the speed tick. Again, price is or the orders are being processed way faster than us little guys can do it. The next bar is our trigger bar to get into a trade. Now, you'll notice the support line is way up here. Okay? And there is no support here. This is called a naked rock star trade setup. Okay? Certain number of conditions have to be present for this to be a valid setup. Of those conditions, it needs to be oversold and have a speed tick. On the open of this bar, if we get our rock star, which is our, it's our rock star indicator, this is the trigger that we have a potential trade entry or a, a trade entry on the open of this bar, this tells us, okay, we're going to take a trade on the on this bar, and it's going to be pretty quick. Now, we may have taken that trade on the open of the bar, or we may have waited an, until it backed up. And I'm going to show you some more videos in a little bit um, of that happening and of that condition, okay, when price opens here. But you get an opportunity to actually, if you're putting on a buy order, you get an opportunity to put it on here, and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. So that's typical of what we're going to see. Price goes up, we get our five ticks, and then price just starts channeling. You know, it's, it, nothing really particular is happening too much. 
Um, you've all seen that. You sit through it. It happens in the markets all the time. Price is just kind of trading in a channel, and we're just waiting. And it, it could be accumulation. It could be distribution. We don't really know. And for our sake, for what we do, we don't care. <clears throat> right? We are just starting to look. What we want to see is the breakout of that channel. And we want to see bars, typically, typically we want to see bars on the breakout that are bigger than the bars during when price was channeling. All right? So now we've got momentum. We've got a speed tick on this bar. Tells us that chances are this bar was manipulated, but we have no trigger to tell us that we have a trade setup. This does not this does not have any rules uh, for us to enter a trade here. Now we do, okay? So we have a we have a bar that's overbought again. Exhaustion is setting in. We're hitting a line of resistance. I showed you that in that video. We have a manipulation. There's no way us retail traders can place trades as quickly as the um, as the um, institutions can do it. You know, the big boys with all the money and and the uh, hardware to be able to process orders like that. So you got to ask yourself, why are the institutions manipulating this bar. There's a reason. And and I could tell you the reason and we could talk about that for 30 minutes. But I, I it doesn't matter. I mean, it does that we know that it's happening, but when you're trading, all we got to know is there's a speed tick, price slammed into resistance. We have a pullback alert that says that the buyers and sellers are now having at it with each other. They weren't down here, but they are up here. We hit that resistance. This bar opens with a rock star. There's our trade. And more times than not, that's what happens. All right? So again, all about confluence of conditions. Where price is breaking out of a channel. Yep, we agree. Momentum increases. The instrument becomes overbought, which indicates the potential for exhaustion. The speed tick tells us that the orders being processed through the exchange are too fast for us, so that's a manipulation. All right? Pullback alert is, is reading every tick and tells us that the volume inside the current bar is changing over from buyers to sellers. It's funny how many people think we don't watch volume, but we actually are. We're just not throwing in your face all the volume because we don't care about all the volume. We only care about little particular types of volume. And when we have that type of volume, we can pick up hey, something's about to happen here, at least in the short term, which is another reason we're scalpers. We can tell in the short term what's likely to happen right now. Okay? So I've got another video here showing you the trades actually being placed. Pull that up here. Let's see. All right, now. On the left, our trading chart looks exactly like what I just showed you, right? Wait, let me back up. I think there was another one. Yeah, I was I was looking at these before we started, and I forgot to start it from the beginning. So you'll notice, look at this hard drop. Look how hard price is dropping here. A mo meter, black to gray to light gray to almost white. Now we're oversold. We have a speed tick. Now I'm waiting for the open of the next bar to make my decision. 
I'm watching this countdown timer. And I use a static Superdome. So I'm watching the countdown timer. And I'm going to put on my trade. At the open of the bar, if conditions exist that warrant, you know, if, if the rules warrant placing a trade. Okay? So what happened? I got filled, but then price backed up. That happens, and it happens a good bit. I call that freight training. So we can get close. Do we know exactly everything there is to know? Of course not. Nobody does. But we can get really close. All right? So again, look at this one. Look at the color of the bars white. A pullback is imminent here. We've got a speed tick, pullback alert, ricochet. We talked about all of those uh, on Thursday. We can, uh, I'll get you that video uh, as soon as it's released. And now I'm going to, I'm, I'm watching the countdown timer. I'm going to make a decision on where I want this trade to be placed. Now you notice the bar opened at 22. But I took a better fill. It backed up. Watch. All right. So the open of the bar is at 22, but it jumped to 26. So if I have an opportunity to get a better fill, and you'll hear me um, say that in the trade room all the time, I got a better fill. That's because that's what happened. I still want to short this, but if it backs up, or goes higher, it's going to give me a better opportunity to get a better price. Okay? And then uh, it ends up, so we already confirmed this line has value, right? Because price pushed up into this line and then pulled back. So we're like, okay, that line is going to offer resistance. Again, it pushes up, hits the line, tests the other side just a little bit, then pulls back and goes in our favor, okay? Now, you may think, oh, I could never do that. It's actually something that you can practice. Uh, this is a trade I think I didn't take. Uh, and again, it went against, uh, it. Uh, no, it opened and went, started going right to target and I didn't chase it. I chose not to chase that trade, even though it qualified for one of our trade setups. Uh, I chose not to chase that trade. All right, and you can see I've got a lot of these. I can speed these up. But people uh, may want to see this. You know, you may want to see this because you see what I'm talking about as far as our trade set us, where you're like, well, that's really fast, and I could never do that. Look, oh, is this one? Oh, that one. That one was a loser. Okay, I showed you a loser. Just so you know, this is not a silver bullet. <laughs> we take losers every day. We just take a lot more winners than we do losers. Okay, so here's the next setup. Just because I took a loser here doesn't mean I got scared and I jumped out. What you got to do is... Follow your trade plan. Now, let's see this. All right. Back it up a little bit. Let it just run. Um, you'll notice that price again opens and then jumps up. And I put an order on, and I actually slipped higher, so I got a much better fill on this one. All right? We can look at more of these later if you, you guys need to see more. So what are we doing? Obviously, we trade pullbacks from a breakout. Do we care about trend? Nope. Don't care about trend. Because inside every trend is another trend going the other direction. We don't care about trend. We measure strength. You see the mow meter and, the, and those hard moves, those big moves out of the channel. We're measuring strength because in trading, strength doesn't last. 
like I said, there's three things that are going to happen. People are going to be getting stopped out. They're going to be bailing out or they're going to be taking profits. And all of those things cause price to change directions. So we measure the strength so we can anticipate weakness. We want to know when the market's being manipulated because the big boys manipulate it for some reason, right? And what we're going to do is not trade with those guys. We just want to watch those guys because every time they do it, they create a reaction. We know what that reaction is, and we take advantage of it. We're in trades usually less than a minute. Man, if we're in a trade two or three minutes, uh, it seems like forever. Um, our losses are also small, okay? Uh, we put on a, a bracket order with a target of five ticks and a stop of seven. Now, some of our traders have changed that to their, you know, risk tolerance levels. But what we do is if the conditions that got us into the trade change, that seven tick stop now is going to become a, a four tick or three tick or two tick or break even. Okay, so we're going to manage the stop smaller, never, never bigger. And our focus now, because we've, for 14 years, we've shown <laughs> conclusively that our system has an edge. Now, the flip side of that edge is, and you've seen it, you better know how to execute. So execution is not generally a big thing that you have to talk about a lot with other trading systems because, yeah, you can get in around here and that's fine. And then you sit there and you stress and you wait it out and, and your brain starts working on you. You start um, thinking that, you know, you know best, or you start panicking, or whatever. Rules kind of go out the window. Manage all trades by shortening your stops. Never bigger, all right? And like I showed you with the qualifying process, ready, aim, fire. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing when we're qualifying the, the trades. If a condition exists, no, we wait. If it does exist, Go to the next one. Ready, aim, fire. There's no wondering if you did the right thing. And we trade on one-minute charts because there's no better information than what's coming in right now. So you're going to want to trade with any liquid instrument. You can trade futures or forex. In the trade room, we trade the uh, euro currency. We trade the Dow E-mini. We trade the oil uh, mini, we trade the GC, we tr uh, gold, we trade the um, Russell 2000 E mini, and we trade the uh, S and P 500 E mini. Five tick target, seven tick stop. You can ask me about that later if you don't understand or it doesn't make sense to you why we would use those targets and stops. I'll go into more explanation later. Now. But a lot of people go, only five ticks. Well, I just don't see how you can make any money trading at five ticks. How does anybody do that? So we get a lot of people that will eventually say, you know, I just don't get it. But it's really not that hard to understand, especially after you commit yourself to it for a while. The thing that you want to do is find a system with an edge. You want to practice that edge. The way you practice that edge is, is just the relentless pursuit of excellent execution. And eventually, you, just, you start with one lot, obviously, and, you know, you have a potential of, you know, a small win. But eventually, you're going to work your way up to multiple lots. I'm going to show you one trade set up which is similar to how I trade. I don't trade a lot of lots on one price, okay? But eventually, you can start generating a decent income just trading a few lots each day on a single trade. You know, I trade for a net three winning trades per day. That's my goal for the day. I don't have a money goal. 
I have a number of winning trades. I don't think about money. I don't talk about money. Money is not my job when I'm trading. Money is somebody else's job. My job is one thing. One thing. I have one job during trading hours. One. What's that? Tra what? What is it? I'm going to look at the chat here. See if anybody knows what that one job is that I have, one and only job that I have as the lead trader of my trading business. What's my one and only job? Not winning trades. Absolutely not my job. Executing the plan. Winning trades is not what I do. Executing the plan is what I do. Trade, uh, the, the net result of the trades, I have no clue what's going to happen. I don't know. And to be honest, at this stage of my career, on a trade-to-trade -trade basis, I don't even care what happens. Because I know over time, my edge, like it has been for 14 years, will play out. The edge will always win if you follow the plan. So if I lose every trade today, I don't care. It's like flipping a coin. If you flip a coin 10,000 times, it's going to be about half the time one and about half time the other. You know the odds. I know the odds here. About 70 to 80% of the time, I'm going to win trades. That doesn't mean today I'm going to win 70 or 80% of my trades. But over time, that's how it works out. Uh, whoops. Let me go back to that. If you guys want to see what it looks like, and I'm just going to hit play on this. A um, minute and 20 seconds. Um, this is what it looks like, kind of looks like, when you, when, when, which, what I do, um, when you trade multiples with what we do. So I have the quantity set to one just for this example. So we're going to, we're going to potentially put on several different orders. So again, we're watching the, we're watching price push up into that resistance. We have a speed tick. We're overbought. Pull back. Like, look at uh, just tons of confluence. Next bar opens. I make my decision. And I put on multiple orders. They may get hit. They may not get hit. But that's going to be how you eventually... Learn to scale in your trades. I'm gonna I am going to kind of combine the trades and change my target and stop a little bit because they went in at different prices. So eventually when you get good at this, because you practice, not because you sit in the trade room all day long, or because you know you've you've sim traded four or five trades over an eight-hour period of time. That's not practice. Practice is a concerted effort to sit down and set up your uh, platform using market replay, and you practice just like what I just showed you here. All right. So we can look at more trades. Um and these are trade room trades, I think. Um, but it's the same thing. Over and over and over and over. So there's not a lot more to learn here than what I've shown you other than do the work. What, how, do I, how do we help you with that? So we have, of course, all of these great indicators, which are really high performance indicators. We have a training program. We have our every day, our trade room, which this is where I do a lot of mentoring in the trade room. Um, if people need help, ask questions. Um, we have training videos. We have a, uh, a peer mentoring program 
where you guys mentor each other. Um, lots of support. We're big on support. We we are are more interested in support than pretty much anything else because we want to make sure everybody has what they need and all the questions get answered to give them the best opportunity for the success they're looking for. All right, and um, if you want to see more, I mean, I could show you more, but there's almost 200 Trade of the Day videos on YouTube. You can just watch them, and you can hear my commentary in the trade room, um, and that link is also in the chat, uh, and you can click on that go right to the Trade of the Day videos. All right. So for all of you guys that are here, thanks for coming. We appreciate you coming. Uh, we appreciate you spending part of your weekend with us. Uh, hopefully you found this compelling enough to want to get more involved. It's up at the top, David. David, I said David. All I see is a D. If you look up at the very top of the chat, all of the links are up in the top of the chat. All right. So, uh, including the link to the trade, uh, to the, uh, I'm sorry, to the store. Yeah, that's an interesting question. In the ES and the YM, we may get no trades, but we're killing it on the CL and the GC and the 6E. And then the next day, we may not get any trades on those instruments. And everything is the RTY and the YM and the ES. So you may want to limit yourself to just those two instruments, but it's a mistake to exclude other potential because the setups are exactly the same. The trades are exactly the same. The the, indi the, the indicator settings for each instrument are exactly the same. So on the, the six instruments we trade, on average over the last two years or three years, uh, we have somebody who actually measures that for us. Um, almost six trades per session, I think. Our sessions is 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, some days could be zero trades. Some days could be 15 trades. Uh, but on average, it's going to be about six trades per three-hour session, a couple of trades per hour. We used to trade the NQ, uh, and it was one of my favorites. It traded very well right along with the YM. But then a few years ago, the volatility picked up to the point where price jumps three, four, five ticks at a time. Well, when you have small targets and small stops, that price jump can knock you right out of a trade setup uh, or the ability to trade. So we don't we want volatility and we want volume, but we don't want radical volatility. We don't want price jumping multiple price levels at a time. So we stopped, we replaced the uh, NQ with the 6E. I don't really like the 6E that much, um, but for the time being, that's what we've got. So that's why. Tick charts, really fast tick charts work just fine. Um, I've been trading one-minute charts for years now. Other traders make decisions on the on the minute, the five minute, the 10 minute time period. You will notice that price will generally change directions at the top of a minute. So I don't like removing time from uh, trading charts. And a lot of people want to do that because they, they say it removes the noise, but that noise is beautiful music to me. 
I mean, the all of the all of the bigger traders use time based charts. All of the institutions use time based. Well, they don't even use charts, but it's all based on time. Uh, there, so time is relative to everything that's going on in the market. So, but that being said, if you like a fast tick chart, you can use that. I just don't like it. Yeah, you're going to pay more commissions um, with the uh, taking smaller um, targets. Yeah, you will. You'll also pay less in doctor bills, and you'll need to take uh, the stomach acid medicine less. <laughs> you'll sleep better. <clears throat> um so it's a small price to pay. And these this money, this this income, potential income, is after commissions and, and fees. Okay? This is after everything's paid. This is what you would walk away with. So yes, you pay more. We have a tremendous edge, and I'm willing to pay more for that edge. Yeah, okay, so my thing is I trade 9 a.m. to noon because that's when the market has the most volume and the most liquidity and volatility, and that's where I want to be. In the afternoons, we get good setups, but those setups, uh, we don't get as many. So I decided I would sit there for hours and hours and hours and waiting for maybe two setups over four hours. And I thought, you know, there's a lot better use of my time to get better at, at trading these trades during the most liquid time when I want to be trading. If I spent those four hours practicing in market replay, yes, I know you guys have a bad taste in your mouth about market replay. The newer version for Ninja Trader 8 is much better. It's not perfect, but it's what we have. and it. It helps tremendously if you spend those hours practicing instead of waiting for two setups. You actually spend the time tuning your skills. Remember the relentless pursuit of excellent execution. That's what you should be working on. So instead of waiting for four hours for two trades, you end up working at and practicing at your trading for four hours, and you might take 20, 30, 50 trades. Practice. So my time is very valuable. Yeah, we will, uh, if you buy one of our programs, we'll, uh, we'll remotely connect to your computer and set everything up for you. Yeah. In fact, it'll be me. Which subscription? Uh, you're talking about our essential add-on suite? Yeah, just send an email about that. That's not what this is about. But if you'll send an email, uh, I can tell you. We'll answer your email. And, that, and the email is up there at the top of the chat. Do any of you have uh, questions that maybe you asked and it scrolled off? If it's not on the chat, if it's scrolled up too high, I'm not going to scroll back. I'm Just ask it again if you missed, uh, if I missed answering your question. The colored shadow around the wick that you're seeing is called the wicks percent. And that will help us to qualify a particular trade setup that we call the naked speed tick, which I did not go over today because, to be honest, that's down the list of setups that you want to learn. The ones you want to learn are the rock star, the naked rock star, and the speed tick. That's going to be 80% of your trading right there. Once you've mastered those, then you can start trading the naked speed ticks. Um, you get one, one, but uh, if you buy one of our programs, uh, you get another set 
like just for a few hundred dollars cheap. Uh, no, we don't have any trials at this time. You mean indicator trials? You can come to the trade room and and spend five days with us in the trade room, which is going to be more valuable than actually putting the indicators on your charts. One of the reasons we don't offer trials or haven't for many years is because there are a lot of hobbyists out there, people who think they're going to throw a bunch of indicators on their charts, and the indicators are going to tell them what to do. And, and they're not going to learn anything about the indicators. They're not going to learn how to use them, what they're telling them, how to qualify a trade setup. They're not going to study. They're going to play with the indicators. They're going to throw them on the charts. They're going to look at it and go, I don't see this. I don't see how this works. They're going to waste our time here. They're going to waste their own time. And there's too many traders out there like that. So many years ago, we decided, you know what? We only want serious people because that there are, I don't know if you saw our trader or hobbyist webinar that we did, I think last week, most traders out there, that are trying to trade are approaching it like a hobbyist and they don't mind wasting other people's time in pursuit of their hobby. The five day trade room trial is free. Um, you should, let me, let me get that link for you. Hold on. Uh, put that in there but I hear is the trade room trial yeah 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 each each program starter extra income and pro all come with indicators. Not all of the indicators, but a group of indicators. Any other questions? I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Well, my grandkids are on the way over. They're going to spend the weekend with us. So I get to go have some fun with them. We're going to take them down to the beach, I think. So I hope you all, I hope we get to see. No, indicators are not a subscription. Once you own a license, you own it. If there are upgrades, you get the, the free upgrade. If you want to move it to another computer, you just send us the new, um, uh, machine ID. It's a one and done. In fact, if you uh, invest in the Pro Trader program, anything we develop in the future you get for free also. It's part of the program. There will be. Uh, we will post it up this afternoon uh, and then uh, send out an email to let you know. Uh, how to get to it. But yes, we will post up a, a replay video of this event. And if you're ready to get started with us next week, start trading with us next week, we'd love to have you.